Hey, we got some people in here. We got some people in here. Who's in here? Let's bring this down a little bit. Heartless Angel, Jeremiah Black, Ikumin, Dockwees, Alexander, Rin Phoenix, Simpros. How are you guys doing today? It's good to see y'all. Let's get the stream lay started. Yes. Travis Newcomb. Natural Explorers is just becoming a natural part of my day. Awesome. Mine too. Mine too. You made my dino's eyes dead, yo. <laughs> Sorry, Ikerman. Sorry, your dino, your dino died. Just, they got extinct. Diamond Eyeball, I read your comments on YouTube that you left yesterday. Um, if you look in the description of the video, of this, of any of my videos, you can see a link to my Discord. You were asking how to hang out with us and like, if there was any way that we could chat, absolutely join the Discord if you haven't already, and you can send me a private message in Discord. Right click on my name and all that stuff. There's channels for you to promote your stuff and do whatever you want in here. It's really cool. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi guys, thank you for joining me today. I'm feeling a little bit better than yesterday, which is great. Yesterday, I don't know, the last few days have been very weird with YouTube. But we'll just power through it and see what happens. Hopefully ISP doesn't kick me, YouTube doesn't kick me, there's no issues. Okay, new member. You go get member. Welcome, Danby, to the Discord. Yes. There are a few people who randomly check for new members and we award new roles. So as soon as you get in, just at me if you if you don't have a member yet, if you're able to do that. And you'll get member. <clears throat> Count me in that coffee attic parade. Cheers. I need coffee for my brain to work. Without coffee, my brain doesn't work, and there's a problem with that. Ecomen, you're not a member. What do you mean you're not a member? I thought I made you a member like a while ago. Weren't you a member a long time ago? Are you Ecomen? Are you the Ecomens? I don't see you as not a member though. Brain juice, as I like to refer to it. <laughs> well, Ecomen, you're not here on the, the Discord, so... Uh, if you were, your name would show up in white if you were not a member. And... A, B, C, D, E. There's no Ecomen here. Unless you're over in one of these other categories. But you're not. So try again. We need more brain for coffee to work. Slurp. I've been taking Flashpoint workout pre-work. It keeps me awake. What's Flashpoint? Is that like an exercise thing? All right, girls, feel the burn. All right, let's get started. <clears throat> As I mentioned in the, the title of this video, I had a dream about some monster fusing system. It was really crazy. I'm going to tell you guys my dream. I was in this theater. It was like a, some kind of giant theater. And there were like different cinemas playing different stuff. But it wasn't just like a cinema, it was like a 3D play maybe. And things are weird because it's a dream, right? And T was there with me, but she was in a she went to go see a different 
uh, cinema, like a different, like she was visiting somebody, like one of her girlfriends, uh, across the hallway in a different one. But there was this part that she didn't want to miss, or I wanted her to see, or something. And uh, it's, it was where the, one of the creatures or things on display, I don't know, it's very weird, was like going to morph or fuse into a different thing. And like, so I t tried to get her for that event, but she was in another thing and I couldn't, I couldn't get to her. But the, this monster like sent out like this 3D thing above the audience uh, like, I don't know what, that's a 3D thing, like some sort of like tail or something. Like think, think this giant Leviathan looking thing, but like, you know, small enough to fit in the theater, a big theater. And then like, it kind of like, it's a dream. So physics are out the door, right? It's floating and stuff. And, and somehow it like fused into another thing. Yep. Rest in peace, Stanley. But anyway, maybe it was Stan Lee in my dreams. He was creating the next Marvel comic in my dreams. It was called Leviathan Fused Creature of the, of the Cinema. I don't know. Rest in peace, Stan Lee. Anyway, a weird dream. But it gave me... It, I woke up thinking about... Like, well, it was multiple stages of the dream. That was one stage. Another stage, I was working on a project, but I wasn't sitting at my computer working on a project. I was, like, in... I was in the computer. I was, like, inside of the software. Working inside the software. Like, I don't know how to describe it. It's weird. But I was making... I was trying to replicate what I saw in the theater. So I was trying to do like a monster fusing system in my sleep inside the computer of this, of like RPG Maker or some software. I was inside the gaming matrix. That's right, Travis. <clears throat> so anyway, now that I've got some brain juice let's let's get started i don't know if we're not gonna make a monster fusing system i just wanted to talk about it a little bit what i'd like to see is something like this a character generator but like with different monster creatures and you can, like it'll have one for size and it can change the size and then in the size you have options that like say x and y and you can change the like the aspect of it, like, you know, if it's how wide or how tall it is, and then that'll scale this, you know, you could have sliders or whatnot. And uh, then you have more options depending on what, what you select, like small creature, large creature, and then change the, have it stretched and everything, like a cool generator type thing for monsters. Wouldn't that be awesome? We need someone to make something like that. I would buy that. Yo, I would buy that. A monster generator, right? That would be a piece of software I'd like to have. Because then you can make a creature and then save its JSON. And then make another creature and save its JSON. And then, like, make a creature, like, in between. Like, load one of them, but then turn it to some of the settings of the other one. And you could even have a button that would fuse two different JSONs together, right? You call it monster fused, fused monster generator or something like that. And like, it'll take two JSON files. Like you create two creatures and you click the fuse button and it'll randomly take aspects of one monster and randomly take aspects of the other monster and then just blend them together and spit out another JSON and another uh, tech, a PNG file for you. Like that'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Yeah, of course, and make it so that it's easy to add new assets to it, sure. You don't know about all that stuff? You don't know about it, or you don't like the idea? The idea sounds fantastic to me. It'd be great.
I don't know about combining files. Why not? Learn it. Rin, we need you to make this generator. Everybody, type W in the chat for Rin to make this generator. I'm not going to school for programming for nothing, maybe one of these days. <clears throat> you don't need to go to school to learn stuff. You buy a reference guide and you go on like code free code camp and you just nose to the grindstone. And I'm not saying you have to, you know, bust your butt every day, but spend some time into it. Put some of your own time into it and be consistent. A little bit every day is better than like crunching and then not doing anything for weeks. Like five times a week, allocate 45 minutes or an hour, right? To just seriously trying to solve arbitrary problems at like code, free code camp or whatever free resources you want to look online. You're going to want to pick up like a, a very, a very small reference guide, excuse me, for whatever language you're trying to learn. That way you don't have to search so much for a specific thing when you could, you could read through the reference guide. And then when you get through the reference guide, what's good about this is you're not always going to be able to sit at your computer, right? So, I mean, if you if you have a mobile or an ebook or like some sort of Kindle device, whatever, that's fine. You can do that too. But having a physical copy of, of some sort of book is going to help you learn because you're going to be waiting at like a doctor's office for somebody and this is going to be great. And you're going to be like waiting at the dentist for somebody or waiting for, you know, an appointment for yourself. You're going to be in line somewhere. There you go. You're going to be trying to catch a flight. You're going to be doing something in a book. It's going to help you, um, like stay fresh on things. Get the most recent version too. Employers, you know what you could also do, Travis? They don't always look just if you have a degree. They want to see what you're capable of. And they need to see that in a very cohesive, quick manner. Put together a website showing what you've done. Make a demo of what you've put out there. And you can reference people to your website. You can reference people to your showcase, right? So demo reels are important if you want to. Um, it's, it's like a resume, right? I know a lot of people use LinkedIn, too. I'm not saying that you should do that, but there's options like that. You don't have to have a piece of paper saying that you learned, you spent time learning this to get a job. Is it going to help? Probably, but is it worth the money and the debt you have to go into to, to make that happen? Maybe not. Maybe not. You can self-teach yourself. You can self-teach. You can self-learn. That's the word I'm looking for. You can self-learn almost everything you need to know. Work on a portfolio and a demo reel. And even if you don't plan to work for a company, putting something like that together just helps you look more professional whenever you're um, getting offers for things like private contract. If you get 1099, uh, if you're if you're working as a 1099 like I've done for several years, then just having um, a YouTube channel, you know, it's just like hey, I've done all this stuff, you know, um, a website, I've done this stuff, whatever. People can look at that and and then they see, they can get an idea of who you are, what you actually know, and then they can decide based on what they see without worrying about if you've got a degree or not. And they'll be like, I can, I can tell by this, by whatever assessments they make that they're willing to take a, a risk on you and take a chance on you. You don't have to pay an institution for a piece of paper Waiting at the DMV, perfect time for a JavaScript pocket reference. Whatever happened to the Driftwood Legacy? Oh my gosh, let's find it. Holy crap. Diamond. I don't know. I mean, it was like, a, that was a v, uh, RPG Maker VXA's project that I ported to MV in 2015. 
I think I called it like level your wizard or something. Um, Legend of Driftwood. 1.3. Level up your wizard MV. Yo, check out my badass game. Level up your wizard MV. Boy, you don't know nothing about this. <laughs> Did I make this? Yeah, I made this. Or did I make this? I don't know. This looks, this is probably a sample. It looks like a sample map. These are a full a chalk field of sample maps. Yeah, this is a sample. Can't, does it play? Does it even run? Oh gosh, the music though. What was I testing? This doesn't look right. I had more than this. This was like, whoa, coming out of VX Ace. But this wasn't the right project I was thinking about. I think it was Legacy, right? That was... I don't think I deleted it. I don't know what happened to my project. Drifty Starter? What was this one? Oh, right, I was making a starter project for people that got surprisingly weird feedback, and I was like, all right, fine, you guys don't want this. Some people did, but they're like, well, what's the point of making a default project if it's just going to be, you know, now this is just gonna be a new default. Like, all right, you know what, you're right. And I started putting too many plugins to make it work. I was like, this is a waste of time, really. So let's see. Nah. What other projects? Deployment, demos? Fart Quest, that was a fantastic project I worked on for a while. I think I cut these projects and put them on an external during a backup. I was like, I don't need all this stuff. I'm never gonna look in here. So it's on an external. It's definitely on an external. <clears throat> I can't open this project. I don't, I don't want to open this project. Because I don't want it to mess anything up. It's the 1.3 version. I'll open up the other version. <clears throat> How did I come up with the name Drifty? I don't know. I can't remember. <clears throat> oh, I remember. It was the Count of Monte Cristo. It was a reference to the Count of Monte Cristo, um, but it was just like a play on words because they called him Zatara, which was Driftwood in their like bastardized dialect. So they called him Driftwood because they found him. He escaped Elba, which was a prison. Or no, he, he escaped the Chateau d'If which was a prison where they took the all of the prisoners they were ashamed of. So he got he escaped and he was he jumped off the chateau into the ocean and he got washed up onto a nearby island. And he was found there by a band of pirates and smugglers and thieves. So they named him Zatara, which he's like, "Hey, I like that. It sounds fearsome." And it was actually their way of saying driftwood so they were calling him like just driftwood and then i'm like hey i kind of like that as an as an alias you know going by monte cristo or um edmund dantes or um, 
or Driftwood. So I was like, well, is, is there already somebody named Driftwood? Like, there was somebody who used the name uh, Monte Cristo. He's a StarCraft sh uh, shoutcaster. I don't know if you know what that is, but he, he was been, he's been going by that name for a long time. So I'm like, I can't do that because someone already uses this. I'm like, all right, is there someone named Driftwood? And I looked it up, and there's a channel called Driftwood. It was a band. It's like a music band, and they were pretty good. Like, I don't, I don't really know folk, folk music, folk kind of country music. I don't know. Folk, pop, country, mix. I don't know what, fu what kind of fusion of music they have. But I was like, okay, I can't go by Driftwood because there's already a channel named Driftwood, and it was a... Am I hearing your tragic origin story? No. Somebody asked about how I got the name Drifty. So I'm talking about my line of thought leading up to going with Drifty. And so I'm like, okay, well, I can't go with Edmond Dantes. I can't go with, uh, or was it, I can't go with Monte Cristo. Edmond Dantes is too, uh, like, I don't know. It was just like, I didn't want to pick that one for some reason. And I couldn't pick Driftwood because there was already a YouTube channel by the band Driftwood. But I'm like, what if I play, the, play a spin on Driftwood? So I was going with Driftwood Gaming. But like, I, I don't know if I was happy with saying, hi, I'm Driftwood Gaming, really. So I'm like, I need an alias. I need something. And I'm like, everything I say sounds stupid when I say like, oh, I'm this person. I'm that person. I'm, and I'm Drifty. And like, even saying I'm Drifty, I'm like, I don't like how this sounds at first because I wasn't used to hearing it. And, and I'm like, I have to pick something because I need to introduce myself and I have to be personal with people to, to I don't know, to seem like a real person, right? And, and to have some sort of persona. So I just settled on something. And I just, like, overnight, I'm like, I'm Drifty. And then ever since then, I'm like, how's it going, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. And that was, like, my intro for, like, the first two years or whatever. And there's the story. That's how it happened. I just picked something, and I looked to see who was using it already, and I changed it and changed it and changed it and changed it until it was customized to, to be, nobody's got it now. It's just, this is me now. This is mine. Asher, how you doing? Mickey Mouse just turned 90? Dang. It feels, it feels old, man. There's no tragedy there, really. Zatara brings back memories. <clears throat> Dungeons of Driftwood. This game, man, went through so many iterations. And it's got a lot of nice maps that I should yoink out of here. These are just like crap random dungeons. But this one, Noob KX sent me some maps that look pretty nice. Could add those. The start screen. Does this game play? this game play? The chibi sprites! No, the chibi sprites! This was a- this project went through so many iterations to become a thing. And it's just super convoluted right now. It's got a gacha pawn system in it. To, you know. Let's use a token and draw. Gosh, this is like the golden age of mobile gaming type of thing. What is the size of RPG Maker sprites? They're 48 by 48. You obtained a two-star silver body. Yeah, let's see what else we get. Can we get a 10-star item? Like 1% chance. Oh no, a two-star silver leggings. It's a gashapon system. The ghetto blurred said something. What did I miss? Probably missed it. Scrolling up. I got an iron axe and my axe. I don't see your statement, the ghetto blurred. Nope. Are you sure you said something? Was it in a comment? Oh wait, never mind. Say Drift, are you still going to do a detailed tutorial on how to use the game character hub? I don't know. Um, I haven't messed with it to be honest with you. 
I kind of like my method of, of stretching sprites now. I don't see why I wouldn't really. I mean, it kind of fits my tool house. I just haven't used it enough to be confident about talking about it. And this is how you do this, how you do that. I haven't even tried, so that's a problem there. I've been busy with other things. And, you know, tutorials are hard. If you've ever tried to put a tutorial together, it you'll notice, like, oh, you'll think, oh, I know how to do this, right? Oh, I know how to do this. This is, you do this and that. Okay, we'll try to teach someone how to do that. And when you're trying to show somebody how to do something, you really see how much you don't know, right? So then you, you stop and you're like, okay, well, I do anyway. And I'm like, all right, well, obviously, I'm not sure what this part is for. So let me research that. And then that takes some time, depending on what you're trying to figure out. And then you come back to it. And you're like, okay, go here, go here, do this. And it often becomes a huge task trying to show somebody something like in a, a piece of software that you don't fully know yet. So I'm not in a hurry to just make a bunch of tutorials on it. And because what will happen is a year from now, I'll look back and I'll be like, oh, I sound like an idiot, right? Like I obviously didn't know what I was talking about here. And like and at the, and maybe a year later, I'll know more about it. And I'll be like, that's not even right. That's sometimes, you know. And I hate to put out the wrong information because I have to private the video. I feel so, uh, I don't know what the right word is for it. And it's cringe to me sometimes. Am I going to do some scripting today? We could. Did you have something in mind? I usually don't just say, I'm going to script something. I just go about my workflow until I encounter a problem. And then I'm like, what's the solution to this problem? Can we write a script to fix the problem? And that's when I get to scripting, when I have a, a, a problem I need to fix. I did a lot on presentation for, like I'm showing a sprite, I'm letting the player learn more, using icons and colors. formatting it like I was trying to make this into a good game but it got just too it got too big and convoluted and I went through so many iterations I mean I just have so many things going on I'm gonna take resources from this project and put them into natural explorers These are supposed to be like towards the middle to end game boss challenges. And also I'm supposed to have a, a party here. These are all instants here, instant skills. Let's use my moves because I'm, I'm taking some damage here. Put a lot of work in custom animations. Bang! She turned me to stone. I almost beat her, but she petrified me. So I died. <laughs> it restarts. This is this is now my my sample project, right? This is my where I will take ideas and action sequences and custom animations out of and put into a new project when I when I'm lost for ideas right this is where I'll go to 
to to grab resources for my new projects. So at the beginning of the game, you would pick your heroes. This is kind of cool because I haven't looked at this project in quite a while. You pick what your character looks like. You just decide, okay, I want this character. Is this what the, your next player looks like? Yeah. And then you get to pick the class and design it at the beginning of the game. But not all the other jobs. Not all the jobs are working. I only finished, what, like eight of them. Warrior, Monk, White Mage, Black Mage, Red Mage, Thief, Paladin, Dark Knight. And I started um, with Beastmaster and Summoner. I was going to use SRD's Summon Core. And then I, for some reason I couldn't get them working in this project. So I kind of got... I got stalled on, on that Beastmaster in Summer. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do the Bard. And I did do some spells and stuff with the Bard. But anyway, we can pick, like, uh, let's pick a White Mage. And then you name her. And then what does your second player look like? Um, this is our second player. This is our, our Raging Monk. This is using a plugin from... I mean, it's highly inventive, but it's using a plugin from Hemeworks' Instance Actors. Let's go with... Uh, this is our Red Mage. And I'll show you the database. It's massive and overly complicated. Do I know a plugin that make your idea happen? Um, what is your idea? Are you going to do some scripting? Actually, I do. I still don't ha know how to make this work without using plugins. I want my game to check. If it has any save files, if it does not, it would instantly start a new game. I think there's a plugin for that. If save file exists, then load game. Push the load, load scene. And if it does, then... Or if it does not find the file, then... Um, Load new game. Transfer the transfer the player. Oh my god, it's a big Edmund. It's a big Edmund. He's huge. Or driftwood. I mean look at this just got too big. We've got a weapon, limit first, head, earring, neck, back, shoulders, chest, waist, hands, ring, legs, feet, relic. Like seriously. And I did a lot of work inside Yanfly's icon generator to make all of the icons for thousands of things, hundreds of things, hundreds. Orbital teleportations out of energy. What was this thing? It's not unlocked. What does this do? Fully heals anyone. Oh yeah, all you gotta do is walk by it and it fully heals your party. That's what it does. Teleport you out. I think I had a teleport system too, like... So many potions, like that's too many, what was I thinking? You don't need all that mess, what a mess. Browse enchanted items. There's a pendant that increases the damage of every type of element and there's a crap ton of elements. The scope is just like, boom, way too far. Like. I'll never finish this project. That's the, the problem with this. I'll never finish it. I did make this little custom thing where the blacksmith is hammering away. I'll just never get it done. And I eventually just learned that like it's never gonna happen and moved on to a small narrow idea that will actually come to fruition eventually months from now.
Th these are all level one. They're gonna do nothing. I've got Driftlet at level 99 and the party at level one. You're not supposed to be here. This is this is a challenge event. Obviously, the game is not a complete game. Oh no, he imprisoned me. That's like a para paralysis. So he's just gonna unload. <laughs> Better luck next time, adventurer. Oh yeah, I forgot I did that. You can see the airship moving in the background. The idea was designed around a bunch of like little spots where you would challenge you would you would start a series of battles and you could get an idea of what the boss is going to do and if you if you when you beat the, the the challenge for the first time you get a bonus and every time you beat it you get a, a certain amount of things first time you get more you have to win five battles in a row the feeling when you lose at your own game well that's not that was like the end boss not the end boss but that was a towards the end of the game boss challenge so I wasn't supposed to win that, really. These are the fights that the players are going to fight at level 1, where we were just attacking. And that's one battle. And I didn't... I still don't know how to make a good system that will start, like, bring in more guys and more guys and more guys. Oh yeah, I had like a, so many different tiers of orbs to like upgrade your skills. So it immediately starts the battle. Oh, I made drain instant, that's right. Is drain two instant as well? I think so. It would have done more damage, but he only had 66 life, so you can't drain past their max amount of life. All of the enemies have custom skills. Like, I really put a lot of work into this project. But it's, it's considered abandoned at this point. It's a resource project now. Obviously, fighting at level 1 creatures at level 99 is not the intended way to play. And there's the boss. You do four battles of like regular creatures, then you fight the boss. Which he will probably die in one hit because I'm level 99. And that was a level 5 boss. But you can repeat that challenge whenever you want. And for the first time, you get three tokens and a 
another CV point, which is for just like another arbitrary system. What did that look like? If I use these, it brings up a system because there's variables that control skill levels. So you can up your stats in any one of these things. Like for example, if I wanted to do resist in a certain element, I would take less damage from that element. I'll put it in healing. So healing goes up. And you can see all of the the skills, I guess, right here. And they go up over time. Uh, various ways, mainly CV points. So many different pieces of gear that I had, that I put in. Our fire skill, yeah, whatever. Put that going. So many different elements, tons of tra Like, what I'm getting at is it's just overkill. It's entirely too much. That's actually a town. I don't know why it doesn't let me go there. Maybe I moved it. Right, it, it got overhauled several times and then Here's the next thing, you know, another challenge event, and I and I went through and made like I don't know ten different challenge events. Level ninety nine, destroy them to level to power level my other guys. You you get these orbs, and the orbs will let you upgrade your skills at some point. All of these moves that I'm doing, the, like the Weapon Unleash or the Limit Breaks, they're supposed to require TP, all of these, but you know, dev, dev cheats, using dev cheats. Heal the party with that attack, it's pretty cool. please. Was that crow dabbing? <laughs> it's dabbing, bro. Thank you, Diamond. I'm glad you enjoy your, your time. Overkill. That's me in the, the sound effect. I say overkill. <laughs> oh yeah, it's this guy. Kill him in one hit, because that's how you beat bosses. You just appear 90 levels higher than they are. Power level your team. That's the first time bonus. You get three tokens and a CB point. And you can complete the challenge again if you want. There's another boss in here in the cave. There's one over here in the forest passage. There's another one, the open hills. There's the one on the bridge. I guess we're gonna have to fight the one on the bridge. But we could say not right now and pass it if we want to. And I was going to add more. Like there's gonna be a little mountain challenge there. There's going to be like another challenge here. There's going to be another challenge right here. Wait, this is a thing? Oh yeah, that's right. That was gonna be a different event. And then there'll be a Coliseum where you can like build your ranks up. These ideas are not lost to the ether, even though the project is considered, you know, abandoned. It's, it's a project I look back on and I can take ideas and maps and different things, resources, and put them into other projects, right. And you don't need to have all this. That's what I was getting at. It's just it's just too much. Look at all these different weapon types. Unnecessary. Armors. Too many different types of armors. You don't need this many types. It's 
It's overkill, right? It's overkill. Thank you, it was made by NoobKX. And whatever you're you're doing right now, Noob, thank you again. And uh, I miss you, dude. Hope hope to see you soon at some point. Oh, this was my my jank way of stopping people from safe scrubbing because there's a gashapon system. Which, if those of you don't know what that is, it's like you, those machines, you put a quarter in and you turn it and like a little thing will come out and you don't know what you're going to get, right? So you can't save the game while you're holding artifact tokens. But you can spend your artifact tokens at the point and then it'll put you at a save point. So we'll spend our artifact tokens, that, which we got for completing the, um, the challenge events on the map, right? And what this does, it lets you get new gear, lets you get upgrades. And there's, there's most likely you're going to get a 1, 2, 3 star item. But you can get all the way up to a 10 star item, like completely overpowered gear early on. But it's random, right? That's why I made it so that you can't save your game. Uh, ooh, that was good. You can't save your game if you're holding these, these tokens. You have to spend them to save the game so that you can not cheat the system. And you can still, I know there's ways that you can still cheat the system. But it makes it a little less likely that's going to happen. Six star items. Boy, get that upgrade. There's like 300 different items in this Gashapon system. Silver pauldrons. With the, the shoulder pads item, I'm using Yanfly's plugin. Um, inner shield. The, the magic shield or energy shield plugin. I forgot what it's called. I'll, t I'll show you in a minute. But it adds like a base amount of HP and it also applies a shield. So the shoulder pads, the classes that can use shoulder pads, get like extra damage resistance. Some people really love that casino shit in RPGs. That is true, Heartless. This Gashapon system is a hook for so many. And it's not like a... As long as you're not, it's, you're not milking your audience for money, they're really cool systems, right? They're, they're really good. And it's not like insert your credit card information to get 10 more tokens. But that's where a company would put it in this system. You know, upgrade your characters by buying these tokens. 99 cents, you get three tokens, you know. There's an auto, I'm running a script here that'll automatically equip your best stuff that you've got. So we'll go ahead and do that. And it'll just wear the best things we have. So if we go to the, the what do we upgrade? We can see we got a headpiece, the headband. That got automatically put on. Silver pauldrons. The Dark Knight can use these. Uh, silver body. We got adamantium gloves. And it tells you what they do, but there's also, I think I use randomization. <clears throat> Maybe not. It seems to be exact. Okay. Yeah, silver leggings. So he got some upgrades. Next character. Silver body was was upgraded. The next character, silver knuckles. We got an upgrade with a weapon right there. You can just kind of scroll through and see who got what. We did get a, a shield, which the red mage is now using. An iron hairpin. I think he starts with that, maybe. Yeah. But anyway, that's how the game works. You do challenge events, and. Uh, I want to show you the data, the database. You can't just save it anywhere. But I think we can go in here now, can't we? Yeah. And we can save it. Because we don't have any of those tokens, so we can save the game. Did a lot of testing. Let's look at the database inside dungeons. Here's our skills. I'm going to scroll down. Nice and slow. Actually, maybe I can do it like this. Hundreds and hundreds. And then look, right here. Wait, no, not right here. A little bit later. I was like, I need to revamp. Oh no, I did that earlier. It was like, right here somewhere. I was like, I need to revamp all my skills. I put all these in here and, and 
And then I'm like, all right, make new, new, new skills. Sorry, fire is different tiers. And then they're using variables inside the damage formula based on the player's skills. And then I abandoned that system at, on the second revamp of it. And I'm like, all right, we need to do a different method. Uh, I don't like this because uh, all of the skills are, like your party has the same level and I wanted there to be more customization. Each character's different. No, way, way overkill. I've got scripts running on, on some of these skills different plugins. So this is a skill that will, when you unlock the skill, it gives you the class. Weapon, um, uh, weapon unleashes, or um, what I call limit breaks in here, which are just action sequence uh, abilities that cost TP. And then I have a whole slew of enemy skills. Dive, peck, wing, rush, kick, back, horn, spit, bite, slither, hammer. These are all enemy skills. The player doesn't even get these. These are all the skills I created just for the enemies to not have basic attack, you see? And then there's more. This was imported from a previous project. Here's some more action sequences. And then I started remaking all of the skills in Final Fantasy XI. Why? I don't know. Just because. So all of the skills in Final Fantasy XI an MMO are incorporated into this, but I was doing it one class at a time. So I did like six or seven or eight of, of all of the classes. And I was like, here's the ones for monks. And they're all customized and like converted from an MMO, an old MMO into MV version of these things. And balanced mostly. All spells for the white mage and then the black mage gets spells yep black mage has a lot of spells and then I tried to do a system where I had passives um, so like you would have like five or six or seven or eight passive states on your character but when you get to the point where there's 20 passive states being ran at the time 1.3 it caused crazy lag so this system did not work at all. And then I tried to do a state where this state would remove this one and just give you 20. Then this one would remove this one and give this one to give less. So I would have like five or six states on a, on a party. But when you have a full party of 20 passive state, it's still lag like hell, like crazy lag. So I made an entire passive state system and it I abandoned it again. It didn't work. So I, I made all the passives or at least many of them. I try to make a double attack, triple attack, because I liked in 11, if any of you have played Final Fantasy 11, you get that double, triple attack spam going, sometimes quadruple attack spam going, and your character's just going bang, 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 and it feels very satisfying to just smash on things like that. So I wanted to replicate that when you're fighting, but one, it created too much lag, mainly that was the issue, and another issue was it caused the one character to just swing too much. And because it was going slow, I was like, well, I could use a plugin to speed it up. Sound Cypher's plugin. And, th and that helped, but it just doesn't translate into MV as well. And then I made the Red Mage, and Red Mage has a ton of spells too, and skills. Then the Thief, Paladin, Dark Knight. Dark Knight has a ton because they have spells. And then I started um, working on Beastmaster. Didn't do much into Beastmaster. It didn't quite work right. Then I went to Summoner because I wanted to use a, a plugin that didn't work for me. So quit that idea too. It's just so many failed attempts. How do you get where you are? You fail over and over and over. But I learned so much with this project. Look, let's look at our items. Starting with the Essence system, didn't like that. Made testimonies to unlock um, classes. I was going to do a card system where enemies had a chance to drop their card. And then you'd have a trading card, collectible card thing. Have ores and ingots and gems and different tiers of gems. And crafting books for each different type of metal and just overboard, man. Different types of currency, pre prestige, artifact tokens, greenbacks, and gear points, and 
whoa, man, you know? And then augments. So not only do you have like 20 pieces of gear, you obviously it's like less than that. It's like 12 or something. But whatever, too many pieces of gear, most of them can be augmented to be upgraded in different ways. Which is just like, whoa, what was I trying to accomplish with this? Making the the most amazing RPG Maker game to ever have existed, maybe. Minus custom artwork, minus a lot of custom artwork. That's, I guess that was my thing. But it's just not ever going to happen, really. I needed, I, I needed to narrow my scope and and really figure out something that I could finish. Orbs that you'd use to upgrade skills, another system idea that I took from um, Record Keeper, which I really liked, but it's just, once again, instead of making like 10 tiers, I should have just had like three, four, or five tiers of things, and then that's it. You get like, I actually like five. Five's a good number. You get the one, two, three, four, five star, and, and that's like the, it, the end game. When you start going past that, it gets, it gets a little much. But no, I was like, ah, oh, I've got all of these different icons. Look over here. Boom. Bigger, 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 bigger. Like, Why? What's wrong with my head that I have to have 12 star crafting materials? I don't know. Had a lot of custom weapons with different effects, different ideas. And I, oh yeah, I have a custom prefix and suffix thing. So when you find gear, it'll be prefixed with something and suffixed with something. So not only do you randomly get like an iron chest plate, but it can be like a wise chest plate of charming or whatever. And it, it applies different stats based on this plugin right here. But I didn't see that happening. So I'm assuming one of these plugins is broke in 1.6. Because to be honest, half the plugins that were created no longer work. Speaking of 1.6. All of the weapons have multiple tiers, right? You've got bronze, iron, silver, mithril, obsidian, etc., etc. Different types of grades and values that go up in price and in stats. And they're all craftable, of course. It ties into a crafting system. Guns, great swords, stabs, flails, harps, because no RPG is complete without a set of 13 harps. Knuckles. Bronze axe, we got axes, whips, spears, bows, great katanas, not just katanas, but katanas, small katanas and great katanas, right? We got the ninja version and the samurai version. And lightsabers, because I mean, lightsabers, right? <laughs> what is, why? And here's some more suffixes that could randomly be put on things. You can get like uh, <laughs> an adamantium harp of temptation to give extra luck. It's mind bottling. <laughs> hey, baby. Moving on to armors. We didn't skimp on armors. Probably have more armors than weapons. Different rings that at one point I was going to make it so that the skill equip system was global and I tried to make it just for the blue mage and I wanted it to work for just the blue mage and, and I couldn't quite figure it out. It was either all or nothing. So at one point I was like, all right, I want it to be for the blue mage so bad that I'll make it for all the characters. So I made rings to give extra uh, slots to equip different more than four skills and went overboard with that too. And then I ripped it out. I was like, no, I don't like it. And then we got helmets, body armor, we got gloves, boots, and I created custom icons for all of this stuff too. This is Yanfly's icon generator. Because you see the gloves? They've got color coding backgrounds. Because why not, right? We got gray, then silver is obviously a bright white color, and mithril's green, and obsidian is dark, and you got different colors that all match. That they all match. Boots, shields, different accessories that'll get you leech and stuff. And then the pendants, right? This is the potency thing. This is using Yanfly's Element Core, which will give you... How would you reduce the scope of this game now? You wouldn't, Travis. You throw it in like... 
I, I, not the garbage because you're going to use it as reference, but you throw it in the corner and you, you pretend it doesn't exist. And you go, oh, I was just, uh, look at my new game, my new game. Narrowing the scope of this is impossible now. You cannot because you're just going to undo the stuff you've already done. You take stuff from this and you start a new project. That's what you do. And I've, I never was going to be, I never thought I would tell people like, oh, abandon that and start a new one. But sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to. It's, it's much easier. Don't delete it. And don't forget, try not to forget what you've learned by making it. Because it's a very valuable learning source. Shh. Yeah, yeah, it's over there. Shh. It's okay. It's okay. That, that's fine. It's, in, it's over there. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. And I haven't even mentioned this project in so long. I made custom icons with this. You can see that it's got a little icon in the top. And it, I put a lot more detail into it, but when you when you scrunch all that detail down into 32 by 32, you can't tell. You can't even see. So there's like an icon on the top left to reference other things like stats and whatnot. Like this is thunder, so there's a lightning bolt. You can't see it, but there's a lightning bolt in the top left corner. It, it just was just an idea that was pretty cool. And if you had a high enough resolution, it would actually work, but it didn't. And then I was going to make tomes that would give special skills as well. Shoulder pads. This was an interesting one to make the icons for. I'm like, how do you make shoulder pads? You know how I made this? Is I made the body armor, but in Yenfly's icon generator, it's really cool. It has layers for it. So I hid all of the body armor or body armor layers, except for the like the neck part and the shoulders. And I'm like, hey, that'll work for the shoulder pads. And then I changed the background color and like changed the hue to give me different... Uh, variations on it and then I input them in the database and made their the requirements of them more and more as it got higher and higher up the price of the stats and the the amount of uh, HP barrier that it provides we got cloaks too cloaks are what you get additional resistance for and not only do you buy them from different things merchants that you unlock throughout the game but it has a different currency you need an entirely different currency to buy this sort of thing why? Why? Same thing with belts. The belts would resist states. I had everything methodically planned out, and I'm like, this is how it's gonna be. Da, da, da. These are for snow. Belts are for states resist, and then, you know, uh, the the cloaks are for elemental resist. And like, whoa, man! Like, freaking chill, dude, chill. And not only one type of headgear, but different types, because you don't expect your wizard to wear a helmet, do you? No, they're going to get different things. The light armor is going to have headbands, and then and then you have to have hairpins for the wizards, right? <laughs> and leggings. Leggings, like, where do you find artwork for leggings? I took gloves and a layer of the gloves and took off, like, the hand part, and I'm like, hey, that looks, for, that looks like leggings. So we have leg armor. And we have three different types of this armor too. It's not just one body armor with 13 tiers. It's three types of body armor with 13 tiers. You've got your cloth armor, you've got like your leather armor, and then you have like your plate mail armor. So you got robes here. Robes, like heavy leathers, and then you have like metals and stuff. And then additional limit burst that I was adding. And for enemies, I had different versions of enemies. These were the early ones that I stopped. They're not even in the game really now. So I didn't delete them. I just moved on down and started over. I was like, okay, let's start over. Here's some mini bosses, and then I'm gonna start over because this is the higher version of them using level enemy levels plugin. And I'm like, these enemies need to have more drops. Look at how many drops these enemies have. Gear points, tokens, stones, more stones, more stones, more stones potions, random things, jewels, like that's all extra drops, I don't know, I'm like they need more than three, they need like 50 drops, no, no, no they don't, and then I'm like okay, I want to have a randomized, I don't want it to all be the same, I want it to be so that you can get into a, a fight with random enemies, yeah that's great, so I have a plugin that swaps, um, 
the enemies here to swap with one of these enemies. And then for here, swap with one of these enemies. Swap with, so I can include these enemies inside the troops and it'll be randomized, right? So not only, whatever, you know, like you don't even know what enemies you're going to encounter. <coughs> we should though, but T has to finish understood. You gotta finish your game, babe. And I need to finish Natural Explorers. After you release understood, and I re release Natural Explorers, we'll start a new one together, and it'll actually be more cohesive. And it, it won't just be an amazing story with with, uh, with a minimal database battle system, or like a huge system spaghetti with like a very light story. It'll be like a mishmash of both really, really good stuff. Next year. Next year, probably 2019, we'll start on that, if everything goes right. It's a 2020 release, a 2020 release. But talking about an idea of a game that doesn't exist. And all of the enemies have different rates, like they take damage from different elements at different rates. Right here you can customize your enemies, they attack with whatever. Like, uh, let's see, the, the ram, he takes less damage from earth, but more damage from wind. The, the Viper will take more cold damage and more radiant damage and slightly more slashing, but less piercing and less acid and less dark damage. They also are, can't be poisoned, they can't be blind, diseased, bioed, and like all of the enemies have a huge degree of customization. They have custom skills, they have conditional statements inside here, they, they've got um, SV enemies. This is for, um, oh yeah, this is to determine if the player has hit them with a certain element a certain number of times, so they get an additional drop if you've hit them with the right element. This is an idea I took from uh, Final Fantasy Record Keeper, to where you have to hit the boss with a certain element, so if you, if you capitalize on the enemy's weakness, you're rewarded with extra drops. And, the, and this just goes on and on, man. Just goes on and on different creatures, it just goes to more bosses and more bosses. The number of states in the game is pretty massive too. Here was all the passive states that I was trying to, to make a thing. But even though they have no icon and they do very little, you start stacking passive states as of a long time ago anyway. Super lag, super duper lag. Keep your passive states down to a, a few maximum. I was getting like six, seven, eight for per character. So you'd have like a party of four with five states on and you get 20 plus states and you just like freeze town, freeze town, bro. Custom animations, yep, there's a lot of those. Yen flies animations, the default patterns, and uh, and my own custom ones. These are all custom. Wow. Wow. Maybe I should pull some of these. Holy crap. I remember spending a lot of time making custom animations. Summon, summon effects. Yeah, that was a cool one. Summon Vampa. As soon as Hadison gets back to me, um, 
I'll be able to get the new animations from Hadison and really make some even better animations using his uh, art assets. Just waiting to hear back. He needs to like actually give them to me. Oh yeah, the chimney smoke. Forgot I made that. One of the houses, I am just thought, I was walking by and I'm like, it'd be cool if we just saw a puff of smoke coming out of the chimney. So I made that, made that happen. Different variations that you can stack. A lot of state animations, when you see it where I say effect, that's the state anim. So there's no uh, sound effects for it because it's just gonna loop using Yanfly's state animations. So like that would be the skill you use it, dread spikes, bang, and then it would repeat this little one over and over like that. In combat, and for in prison, in prism, you do that, or it would repeat this one over and over to show that you're like locked in a crystal cell or whatever. And this is a, a variation of the same one. All of the abs absorbs except for the TP absorb. They're just different colors of this pattern. Most of them anyway. Overkill. Yeah. There's an overkill plugin. Made by um was it Tigris? It was it was it was Yadfly, but some one of the other ones. Oh no, I feel bad. Who made the overkill plugin? It was a cool plugin. I don't think they're part of the team anymore. They all, you know, went on to do other things. But Yanfly kind of incorporated it into compatibility mode, if you know what I'm talking about. Let me just do a search. There it is. Who made it? It is Tigris. Okay. So Yanfly and Tigris. Made an overkill plugin, which was really cool. I liked it, and I was like, heck yeah, I'm gonna put that in my game. But I just changed the animation and recorded my own sound effect for overkill. <laughs> overkill. Well, I got lost kind of reminiscing through this project. And I can go on and talk about it more and more. But at this point, it's just a resource project that I'm surprisingly not pulling a lot of resources from, which I should. I should take some more stuff from... I mean, I made all this stuff. So much work. They're mostly plays on uh, built-in patterns with different animations and slight batch effects and shifting things and changing hues and changing sound effects and but some of it is handcrafted like from start to finish and alto have as a story.
What's up, Shadow? How you doing, man? What is that spawning effect that I have on my enemies? That's another plugin that apparently still works. I should try it in the new in Natural Explorers to see if it actually works in 1.6. Um, I don't. I don't think it's a Yanfly plugin. It may be a Gal plugin. Let me go to the bottom and look. Oh, it's Mr. T's. It's called, uh, is it a merge animation? No, it's not. It's not. Um, yeah, it is. It is. Sorry. It's Mr. T's Emerge Animations plugin. And what it does is just play an animation of your choosing. And uh, but when you get into a battle and it's, when the enemies spawn, it plays an animation. It's a very simple plugin. Um, so you just put a little note tag, right? You say, um, appear animation, and you put the animation number and then the frame. So example would be like this appear animation, this animation, on that frame. So you copy this and you go to your enemies and you can see on the enemies, I mean it's a mess so it's hard to find but it is here, appear animation 526 on the first frame. So I start playing animation as soon as they appear and the animation I'm playing is this one. How would you export import database functions from one game to another? Actually, I think you have a tutorial on that. I do. I think it, I was showing how to import maps from one product to another, but it's the same. I could show you. In fact, I will right now. I want to take a, the emerged function from this product and put it into my other product to see if it works, right? So what do I have to do? I need to make sure I have the art assets. I need to make sure I have all the plugins and I need to copy paste the actual entry into the JSON file. So let's do the, the plugin and art assets first. I'm going to go to game open folder inside my project that I'm copying from. I'll go like this. And what I can do is open up another instance of RPG Maker. So how you do this is you have one open. And then instead of opening from the, the application itself, you go into the project that you want to copy to. In this case, it's going to be Natural Explorer. So I'm going to double click on the game.rpg project, like so. It's going to open up a second instance of RPG Maker. So I can go like this now and select my other instance of RPG Maker. And now I have two different projects open at the same time. Step one. Step two, take the assets from one project and put them into the other project. So I already have the folder for this open. I'm gonna do the same for this. So now I have two folders. I'm gonna have Natural Explorers and I'm going to have, um, where's it at? Folder, is it this one? Nope, it's not that one. This doesn't need to be open. Uh, did it close the folder? I don't know. Whatever. We'll go here, open folder. So we have dungeons, and then we have natural explorers. Yeah, I guess it switched them. So I need to copy from here and put into here. Back up your project before doing this, unless you know like exactly what you're doing. Let's talk about how you back up your project. You just copy the entire folder, and you paste it somewhere. So I'll create a new folder. I would do this on another hard drive, actually, but let's say I have an external and I'm, I'm gonna go in the external and create a folder and you date it, you date it. You're gonna give it whatever the date is. I'm gonna say, this is my 11, 14, 18 backup, right? 
because you're not going to check this project. So as soon as you make changes to your project, this one's out of date. Your backup is out of date. But if you lose your, your new one that you're messing with, you can always revert back to here. So we're going to date the folder and paste the entire project into that backup folder. And what I'll do from here is I'll cut this folder, the 111418 backup, off of this hard drive and put it on another hard drive. Because if your hard drive fails and you've got a backup of your project on the same hard drive, if that hard drive fails, well, your backup also failed. Your project's lost and the backup's lost. So this is not, this is an example. You take this folder, this folder goes onto another hard drive, like a solid state, an external, a flash drive, right? This is just faster for me to show you this way. I do have a new hard drive on the way. Hopefully that gets here soon. So you back up your project like so onto a different hard drive. And then you start messing, right? Then you start moving stuff and, and you're free to mess it up. I mean, you don't want to, but if you happen to, then you're okay. We're not going to mess it up though, hopefully. We're just going to move in some plugins. So inside Dungeons of Driftwood, I need to find Mr. T's plugin. This is Mr. T's Emerge Animation. This is 1.3. Dungeons of Driftwood is using 1.3. It's an old project. So when I copy this, even if I do it exactly right, there's no guarantee it's going to work because I have different library version. I'm using a different version of Pixie, a different version of the engine. So it could still not work, but we're going to try it out. So I got the plugin. Now I need to get the art asset. So we'll go back into the root folder and go into IMG. And I don't exactly know which one I need. So I open the database and I go to where it's at. And under enemy appear, I have state paralysis animation state paralyze and I have darkness one these probably are built in so what I'm gonna do now is assume that I have these art assets also the music the sound effects do I have paralyze one do I have thunder 12 do I have magic four if you copy paste and then you try to play it and it doesn't find thunder 12 .ogg, it's gonna crash your game you're gonna get that endless re retry button so you have to also make sure that you have the same sound effects into your other project. So let's try this first. Assuming we already copy pasted, we're probably gonna have to come back and do this. The images and the sound effects from one project to another, how do we take this and put it into this? Well, it's the same as copy pasting files. We have the, the database of this project and we open the database of the other project. We go to the same tab and we make spaces. So for here, I'm going to uh, left click it, highlight it. I'm going to press the control button and I'm going to press C. So I'm going to copy control C. Now I go over to my other one and I press control V. That's going to paste it. And there we have this. But it may not find, I don't think I have Thunder 12. So I'm going to double click here to see if I have Thunder 12. And you see how it defaulted to none. That lets me know that I did not have Thunder 12. So I can cancel this change. But there's still a problem because if I try to play this in the game, it's going to crash. It doesn't have Thunder 12. Does it have Paralyze 1? Yes. Does it have Magic 4? Yes. But it doesn't have Thunder 12. So let's go into the folders again. And we're going to go into Audio, SE. We'll press Control F to do a find and we'll type in Thunder 12. And it finds Thunder 12. We're going to take both the OGG and the M4A, control C those, we're going to copy them and we'll close this to put us back into the root directory. We have those two files copied. We'll go into our other one, root folder of our game we're copying to, audio, SE, and we paste them in here. Boom. Now we have Thunder 12. So now if we look for Thunder 12, it should find it. It didn't go defaulting to none. It found it. So we would play it. 
it plays it the same. And we copied that in there. We're not done quite yet because we have to install the plugin. We copied the plugin into the right directory, but we didn't actually add it to our database, right? So let's do that now. Hit OK. <clears throat> I'm going to look on this project to see where I have it. It's toward the bottom. Mr. T's Emerge Animation. What's after it? Any plugin that I'm using? Terax Lighting is after it. So I'm going to put it before Terax Lighting because I know it works in this project. So I'm going to use this as my reference. I'm going to put Mr. T's Emerge Animations before Terax Lighting. Does it matter? Maybe. We don't know for sure. Moving your plugins around will fix and break certain things. So because I know it works this way in this version, I'm going to replicate it as close as I can. Do we have any other plugins in this project that this also has? Not really. Mm -mm. So I'm going to put Mr. T's Emerge Animation inside of this. I could probably copy from here as well since I have it in the database. So we'll open up the database here. We're going to go down to the bottom and we're going to paste it and it pasted right the way it's supposed to. It'll take the settings and put them the way the settings were here. So I'm gonna bring this up to put this above Terax Lighting as it's shown here. I'm gonna double check. It shows the same thing, right, order. You can make all the animations play at the same time or you can make them play as they appear and on what frame. We're gonna be putting, we're not quite done yet because this plugin requires us to put a, a note tag, right? So we're gonna copy this note tag and we're gonna put this note tag on our enemies or our troops. Which one is it? Enemies, we're gonna put it on the enemies. So we hit okay, hit okay, and save our projects. We need to make one more change. We need to go here on our enemies and give an additional note tag. We're gonna say emerge animation. Do we want 118? No, we want the one we just created, right? So let's find that number. It'll be different depending on where you put it. It was like 560 something in this project, but over here, it's only 203. So we're gonna take that number 203, and we're gonna say 203, and I want it to happen on the first frame, not the 21st frame. So we're gonna put this to 203 comma one, and we'll copy this, and we'll paste this in here for all of our enemies. We're not done yet because we need to test it. Before you just accept your changes, you have to see if your game will launch. You have to see what will happen when you try to load an enemy that's got this note tag. The game may not even launch. It may just say now loading forever because we put in a plugin that it may not be compatible with in this version. So what we're going to do is test our game. So far so good. We need to get into a battle and see if it shows that animation, right? If it does, then apparently, so far, you may encounter problems later on, but as far as we know, if it plays that animation and doesn't give you any errors, we've taken functionality. Snu, 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 snu. We've taken functionality from an existing project and put it into a new project. So let's go jump into battle. I predict sna sna sna. Hey, it worked! So, looking at our old project improved our new project because we took some functionality from it. The animation that we created, the sound effects that we put in, the, um, the plugin that we were using, and we verified. Inside joke? Well, I created that and it was an interesting time making that inside of Audacity because we were filtering it and we ended up reversing it. It actually started off me going dun 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 something like that. But then it, when, it, when you reversed it, it became kind of comical to me. And so I went with it and then just stuck with it. And we've heard it several times. So not really inside joke, but maybe inside joke. I don't know. But let's start another fight and make sure that everything is good. So far, so good. We'll, we'll start combat one more time. We'll see the emerge animation happen. Boom! Emerge animation. We did it.
The not so inside joke, inside joke? Yeah. Exactly. You got it. Beautiful. Beautiful. What I could do is the lazy way of just taking all of these and then putting them in the game. But the problem is, you see how the Thunder 12 was missing? There's probably a bunch of sound effects I'm using in this project that I'm using in my other project. So the lazy way is to take all the sound effects and throw them in your project, but that's not the smart way to do it because you're going to get your project bloated. You don't want that to happen. So it's better to handpick the things you want. Like, for example, if I wanted this animation right here, I would copy this one animation, put it in, figure out what I'm going to do with it, test it to see if I have the sound effects in my project, move the sound effects. It's more time consuming, right? But it's more foolproof. You're, you're less likely to deploy your game and then somebody crashes because they can't load stone skin. That happened. True story. Game breaking bug in Legends of Driftwood. Stone skin will cause you to brick. You'll, it'll say cannot find resources and your game crashes when you try to play. And the skill's beautiful, it works great, but it's missing a sound effect or an animation or something like that. So it just bricks. It's snowing again. So, since we have this open and everything, what other things should we take from this and put into to this? That's not going to make it over complicated or over... Um, do we have any interesting set, uh, tile sets? The tile sets were the weakest part of the project, really. I was kind of like trying to put in custom tile sets. This one doesn't work right. It's some um, fan made fan made at Final Fantasy VI sprites that were resized from VXAs. Didn't quite set them up right, so I didn't get those in there. And then I was just getting like desperate for changes, and I was like, "Oh, let's invert it. Let's put filters on the tile sets." No, I needed to, at this point, look for DLC look on the forums more. I was failing to um, find the right assets. So in the new project, when I started it, I was like, I need better assets to make this happen. And I found first seed material. That's the current best, in my opinion, tile sets, the FSM. Of course, it depends on the style of your game, too. It's not best for every game, that's for sure. But it's, it's best for my style in this next project. I'm using cyanides here. But this project, Dungeons of Driftwood, became like four gigabytes and it's just a mess of just so much stuff. It's hard to keep track. Oh yeah, we didn't even look at the common events. A lot of space. It's mostly open space. Oh yeah, there's a teleport system, huh? I made like a mini-map and a teleport. Wait, what's the button for that? I made a, I gotta look at my button comment event plugin to see where I, what button I was using. I wanna show it, I can't remember what button.
Okay, it's either that one. T U I O K. Let's just press all of them and see which one it is. Is it this one? Yeah, it was this one, the squiggly line. So, it brings up a certain spot. It shows, this is like a mini-map thing. I can click to teleport to certain key points. This was like a half-baked teleport system. You can press this to teleport around the map. Let's see. Potential bugs? Um, let's see. What if I were to move in front of an event and then do it? Let's see. If I move my character, like, this will open up a, a town, right? Yeah. Okay. So what if I put my character right here, and then I do this and click like that? Yeah, that doesn't bug it out or anything. That's fine. But it was... I basically... You can see the grid. I just took a screenshot a print screen of the editor and then I I drew this on top of it inside the game so I'm drawing four pictures this one the big background and then one for each of these bubbles and you can click on the bubbles using Anfly's um, not button common events the button common event calls this me this menu the scene it's not really a scene because you're still on scene map it's just drawing pictures I'm drawing one with like a background, but then I'm putting like just this tile on it, and then I'm putting these circles down on top of those to teleport around. Was it mouse common event? Picture common event. Using picture common event. <laughs> you seem salty, Heartless. I am. Most mods are annoying. So right now, you're yoinking good features from other projects? Yeah, I'm. since we have it open, I'm looking at um, prospects. Like, what should I? There's obviously a thousand things I could take from this project and throw it into the project, but I don't want to just be um, lazy and dump everything right there, like all the assets or all of the uh, animations. I mean, that's part of the problem with this this project in the first place is I dumped stuff into it so much and like this I did that, I did this, being more selective. So I'm getting a lot less done, but it's staying manageable. I'm getting a lot less uh, content per amount of work put into it, but it's more manageable and like there's an end at the end of the tunnel there's a light at the end of the tunnel I definitely want to take some of these animations for sure I made hundreds of custom animations and I'm going to bring a lot of them to the other project as needed so maybe what I'll do is continue working in the project like I do when something needs a custom animation I can go into this project and be like, you know what, that's the animation for this in my game. Copy this, paste that. If it has sound effects, find those sound effects, put them in. And that's what we'll do. Because I made all these myself. Using uh, mostly RTP assets. But switching the pattern Taking the pattern, switching them up, right? Different images, this pattern never had this image before with that hue, with these sound effects, you know, with this shift or batch or position change or frame shift, slight manipula uh, manipulations to the, to the pattern produces way different results.
lots of Yan flight tips and tricks went into this project too. Wow, there's 19 elements in this game. So crazy. There's like 40 different skill types. Why? So many weapon types. A lot of equipment types. 16. What a mess. I think I have four in my other project, my new project. Much cleaner. Four. We got hands, head, body, relic. So like your hands could be your weapon or your tool. Your head is a piece of gear, your body is a piece of gear, your relic's your accessory. That's it, simple, easy, you can augment these if you need more customization. These stay the same, you don't really need to mess with them. As a matter of fact, you can pretty much delete all of it with general armor if you wanted. I'm leaving space to add potentially one more weapon type and potentially one more element. But basically that's that. We'll have two types, techs and abilities. That's pretty much it. This will be the MP consuming things. This will be the TP consuming things. And simple, easy to, ca to, to classify and customize the skills other ways. You don't need different types. I need images for my vehicles. When the player gets to the second town, which I need to make, I need a second town. I need to make another town. It'll be a smaller little port town it's going to be south of the island. Let's see, let's look at the world map. I'm gonna put it like right down here. Oh, I already kind of made a little camp. But I actually wanna move this. I don't know about this camp. I'm thinking about like right here somewhere. Next to all the trees. Might even go like this and put the town right here like a, a small logging port like they build ships like they're they're known just because they make boats and this is where the player turns in like 500 lumber or something or maybe not that much I don't know exactly but a set amount of lumber like right there this works fine And I kind of want to move this now to somewhere else, like right there. Mm -hmm. And this town will be where we build our boat, and our boat will let us travel through all the shallow waters. So we should expand the shallow waters around here. Like maybe the reason why it was, it was positioned here is because it was a great spot because there was got a lot of extra shallows. And it also has lumber, like a bunch of trees. So you, it's a perfect spot because you got extra shallows and you've got um, the lumber to craft them. And you could sail around the island if you wanted to, if you followed the coastline and disembark from any one of those spots. Or you can travel to the next island, and this will be some event too. Maybe you force the player through um, a whirlpool and it destroys their boat in the storyline. Axel, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't understand what you're saying. Try Google Auto Translate. What's up, Charizaniko? Add some tree stumps. You're cutting down trees, after all. Sure, sure. 
we'll do tree stumps inside the map. Like, because the player's going to go inside another map, and then it, we'll have to draw that town where there'll be some chopped down trees and a port, a little port. How you doing, Axel? Cool, you're programming a game? That's awesome. What are you working on? How's your project? What's it about? Am I programming a game? Yes. Designing it. Programming when I have to. And anyway, when we make the boat from this town, we'll sail and we'll be able to get different asset, different nodes here as well. Like there'll be another lumber yard, but this lumber yard will take like high quality saws and you'll get like uh, pine wood or something. Yeah, I could recognize it was Russian. I played a lot of EVE Online, so I've interacted with a lot of Russian people. But I, I can't speak it, so it didn't help me knowing that it's Russian. And from here you'll get the high quality wood using high quality saws, and you make the, the ship that travels on the deep water, deep ocean. It feels a little claustrophobic having only one tile to go around the coast, so I'm just expanding the coast a little bit. The shallows. This is like a trench right here. This is like a a trench that the player would go, like a shallows, like some safe some safe area for a small boat to sail through. And in between, there's some deep water. But if you sail around the deep water, you can follow the trench and go to the next place, which will be here. You should place some rocks along the coast. Sure. I'm not sure how to not make it look weird. Did 
Does that look weird? I don't know. Kind of looks weird. Oh, you mean these? Why do they have a different background? Like, it's so weird. These are supposed to be for that. It doesn't make sense to me. Why? You see, like this, they match perfectly in, right? Like pool rocks, but not in the ocean. They look way out of place. They're perfect for a lake. We can zoom out and put a lake in here. Let's go with like a little lake right here. Gosh, it looks bad. We would have to put like... What tile is it supposed to even be on? Is it this one? And then this goes over here? No, it doesn't even match that. What does this match? You know, that's so weird. What is it even supposed to match? That doesn't even match that. So these are like, these tiles are so like, near useless. You mean this one? That works. Those look pretty good. Yeah, no, I like that. Good idea. Good idea, Cajun. And I'll just push the coastline back so that the player can get around them a little bit. Those look pretty good. What, what does this one look like? Oh, like floating ice. You know, I never even noticed these. Wow, that's so cool. Like a slush near glaciers and stuff. Just some rocks. I like that, that was a good suggestion. Needed something else too. a good auto tile too. These are, these are a good one. They look different even though it's the same thing. Zoom out a little bit.
cool. Small little improvements. Well, all right, guys, we're going to end the stream here. Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Good suggestions. I love the interactivity. If you want to come hang out before and after the streams, we have a Discord. Links in the description below. If you'd like to support what I do, please consider backing me on patreon.com slash driftwithgaming. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at driftwithgaming, twitch.tv slash driftwithgaming. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Give this live stream a thumbs up if you like these live streams. I stream Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to noon Eastern Standard Time. So catch me live if you can. And if not, these should these videos should be uploaded to YouTube approximately 45 minutes after they go live in full 1080p with the, the live chat as well. When they get claimed, the the chat won't uh, auto scroll. It won't show live tra chat, but I've gone to using only official copyright free music from the YouTube library, so we shouldn't have any problems with that. But yeah, I mean, thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. We looked at some of my old work on Dungeons and Driftwood. We spent some time talking about how to take assets from one project and put them into another project. We took the Emerge animation from Dungeons and Driftwood and put it into this, so when we get into a battle here, we get that little sound effect and lightning the enemy just appears out of a flash of lightning effect. We touched up the map a little bit. We expanded the coastline. We put some rocks in. We talked about the future town, the next town we're going to build. And it's the goal of, of the next few episodes. Try to start another map, probably. And mapping's so hard for me. And build a little logging town that makes boats. I need to find some sprites for my boat and ship and airship. I like to use not these ones. These are great looking, but they're just default. So I want to make some different ones. And uh, that would be great if I can find something. There's probably stuff on the web, on RPG Maker web. So we'll go there to look and update those. Let the player, you know, accumulate a bunch of logs and then get a boat. And then sail over here, make another little town and probably some nodes like a lumber area we can get and maybe another mining spot. We can get, set up another mine, set up another set of timers to have another thing that the player can get. And maybe be a copy paste of this, but change the item so that you get like, uh, maybe you get something different, you know. We get like um, 10 in there, or maybe it's like a huge salt mine and it's just mostly salt. Uh, I don't know, we'll set up another mine and we'll set up a lumber mill here. And maybe like a, an encampment or maybe some farms right here. Maybe we'll do the livestock farm here, but we'll do like the place where you grow food here. Like you can grow something else. I don't know what, but we'll add some, another thing to the crafting menu so you can harvest another thing. We'll set up another town over here somewhere, probably, probably over here in the corner where they, We'll bring some of these trees further out too. This is a giant forest area. Where they harvest logs, the high quality lumber, and we make a boat, a ship. So we make the boat first over here, out of this town, make our way over here, do other stuff, get high quality stuff, and then make a ship with that. And the ship will let us sail to the infinite unknown of nothingness, right? And we add a Another island over here, and another island over here, and maybe like some islands down here. Keep working on our map. Got a long way to go. Still have a long way to go. But progress is being made, slowly and surely. We'll see you guys. I love you very much. Uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Have fun. Good, good luck with your projects. Come hang out in the Discord. Bye bye